you ran an election campaign, kind of a no one thought you could do it, but you did and you won. Why did you first run several years ago? And then why are you running again now? Well, much for the same reasons. Uh, last uh, last time, three years ago, we ran because it, it was crystal clear to me anyways that the city was not going in a direction that it needed to be going in. In fact, it was going in the wrong direction. That direction uh, that direction being Seattle, Tacoma, Portland, um, uh, Los Angeles, San, uh, uh, San Francisco. Uh, we, we saw that. And, it, and, of course, we were still in the convulsions generated by COVID and the shutdowns uh, for COVID. And uh, I thought I could, if, if I got into office, I could make, make some difference. And we did. I came in and I uh, uh, stopped the notion of mandatory vaccines. We, uh, we worked hard at, uh, we didn't, I didn't mandate any masks or anything like that. However, I did, you know, throughout my health department, we did provide for for vaccines and masks if you wanted them. Um, I took a libertarian approach, not unlike what Governor Dunleavy did, is if you want a mask, you, I'll get you one. If you want a vaccine, uh, you can go to the health department and get them. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to compel someone to get a vaccine uh, that was by and large untested. Um, normal vaccine testing cycle is seven to 10 years, and this one was done in, in a matter of weeks and months. We don't do that kind of thing in America. And uh, so I, I was instantly hesitant on that, and I just thought people should have the chance. And then the shutdowns came uh, in our city. That was done by the assembly and the previous mayor. And we were shutting down businesses left and right. Um, I think well over 100 went out of business. And and we're still trying to recover from that. And it, it's it's funny, the big box stores, which I have nothing against. I'm a Costco member, and I go to Fred Meyer, and I go to Walmart, and nothing against them. But they seem to prosper. If you track their stock prices, often they did well. Um, the small businessmen and women, women we're going out of business because um, the, the the cards were stacked against them, I think. And uh, we had nonsensical uh, COVID rules. They were so convoluted and complex back then. It, it, it was actually, actually ridiculous. So, you know, you can stand, but you can't dance. Or if you sit, you can't sing. It, it, you couldn't keep. And there was plexiglass everywhere. I, I should have got into the plexiglass business because there, it seemed to be there was plexiglass shield somehow would stop a a virus from spreading, I guess someone thought. So uh, we we did that, and uh, and then we came in, and then because of the shutdowns, which didn't need to happen, um, business suffered. So now I'm tr you're, we spent the first two and a half years trying to restart a city, especially on the economic side. And then we came in, and we there were some projects. You get into office, and you learn, holy cow, it's not just COVID and things like that. We've got had some major construction projects, especially downtown, that were stuck in the bureaucrat political realm that is Anchorage government. We unstuck them. One is Block 41. That's the the old Key Bank building downtown, uh, and that entire city block. And to include, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, the old Fourth Avenue Theater. I had to make the decision to um, to to allow them to tear that down. the 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 building was in in terrible shape with lead elevator issues, lead paint elevator issues, asbestos issues. It was just a mess. But we did get the builders <clears throat> to uh, to agree, and they, it didn't take much prompting, to save the icons from the building, the front lighting, all the neon lighting, a lot of the artwork inside, which will be recaptured. It's being stored in Anchorage, and it'll, be, it'll populate like the lobby of the library. That was a big thing. And then Block 96 was a large uh, apartment comp complex in a west end of downtown that we freed up and uh those those were were big wins kind of out of the chute and then within a couple of months of coming into office i saw that the uh, uh port of alaska modernization program now the don young port of alaska the, the modernization program was hitting some real road, roadblocks they there was the right per people weren't running it uh, we had port managers team and municipal employees running a $2 billion, $1.8 billion construction project. And that just didn't seem right to me because when I came in, well, how many ports have you built? And the answer was, well, none, of course. But these people are, are, are absolutely some of the best, I think, in the country at running ports. 
But I says, I'm not in the port running business right now. I'm in the port building business. So I assigned a team. I went to Jacobs Engineering and I says, would you like this project control of this construction project? And they were the 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 um, contractor of record at the point at that time. And they said, yeah, we've been asking for this for 10 years. So they brought in their senior executives from the East Coast. And I says, all right, this is now your project. Um, you're you're in charge of it. We'll check on you. Uh, I'm hiring another engineering firm to monitor your work, which we did. And um, and and uh, and I says, if you if you don't if you don't make the timelines is what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire you and find another engineering firm. And I'm just telling you, Jacobs has done a fantastic job. They bring, brought in staff from around the world to supervise this project. And that is the lifeline of this state, certainly of this city. Ninety five percent of the people in the state are fed by that port. And that port is in dire need of repair. Like, And you can go to our website. We've got a video that shows we, we got a drone, flew underneath the, the port, and we took video at extremely low tides last August. And we captured, we think, the essence of the of the failure of, of that thing. That one bad docking, a ship bumps that dock too hard or or an earthquake, and that, that port will fail. Once it fails, no food. And I, I'm not... I'm not, and there's no Berlin airlift kind of thing going to get us out of this mess. Um, it, it is, it's that port or it's nothing. So we've got to get it built up. And the project now is back on track. First quarter of 2028, the terminal number one should be up and operational. That's the plan. And once it is, then we have what I think is food security. And that will, that will satisfy for until terminal number two is built. And then we'll have what about what we have right now. And uh, so that was probably the biggest thing of importance to the whole state was was the port plan. Um, we did some other things. We funded a lot of police academy, fire academy, uh, academies. That that was um, that was essential to me because we public safety is the first order of business for any politician, and having a well funded police department and a well equipped fire department. Uh, was a priority of mine, and I, uh, I I moved on that, and uh, and we're doing. I got two fantastic uh, chiefs in the police, and Mike Curl and Doug Schrage, uh absolute uh, fine gentlemen, great great chiefs, and th those those departments give me no trouble whatsoever. And even as we try to support them financially, um, something else, you know, and as we deal face to face with the assembly or what my staff calls the nine mini mayors. Uh, I've got uh, some challenges there where I've got nine assembly members that who seem to think they're also the mayor, which is fine. That's politics. Uh, and we have some areas of conflict, normally in spending, therefore budgeting, and also in uh, in the way we deal with homelessness in this, on the streets of Anchorage. I take a, a bit of a different approach. Housing is very critical. We understand that, we really do. But also, too, there needs to be a law enforcement component of that. And we were weak on that. But that wasn't my fault or the assembly's fault is what that was really was uh, the Ninth Circuit. Uh, Ninth Circuit Court made some decisions called Martin versus Boise, which really limited our ability to enforce our own municipal code as it comes to things, concepts called you know, a vagrancy. And so I filed an amicus brief several months ago, um, which now we anticipate Supreme Court relief from the Ninth Circuit decision, probably June or July, and that will get us back to where we can now enforce a municipal code as far as vagrancy and behavior on the street. That, that's, that's a big thing. And when we found out here about a month and a half ago that the Supreme Court was going to take that, uh, there was high fives going around uh, the eighth floor and certainly on the, in the Department of Law, and they're, they're very excited about it. Um, I think something else we did that's really big. Housing is probably number one or two after the port on the threats to our city, the importance. We need to build more homes. We need to free up the land for that, which we've done. I signed a, a modified methane gas gas agreement with Eklutna Corporation out in Eagle River. That allows us to, that'll allow our partner, Eklutna Corporation, to step in and build about 1,170 homes in Eagle River on the in Powder Reserve West. Uh, that that was a huge win because we need to uh, help. Government needs to help 
much by getting out of the way, but bringing land and, and money together. Capital needs to finance these projects. Building of homes solves so many of our problems. And I have supported every building project I can come across. Holton Hills, that was stalled a year ago. It That got installed in cooperation with the assembly, I might add. Uh, that's a great project, not a huge one, but a significant one, especially for Eagle River. The Holden Hills thing, we're working on another project in West Anchorage, which uh, should free up 160 lots if we can get to that success. There's other projects that we can't mention that are coming up, coming online, and um, yet we can't mention them yet, and uh, that will help free up. But at the end of the day, I have a responsibility to make sure government gets out of the way of the development of homes, and we do have some restructuring coming forward that's going to have to make that easier and more cost effective because at the end of the day in our system capital um, has to come in and it won't come in and develop the homes that we need if the profit isn't there and we we can't forget that to build homes our builders have to make money we That's want right. them to make money